Yo everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing my 2016 regrets video. Now I've never done a regrets video before so it is a first for me. There were quite a few things that have um, annoyed me a little bit this year in terms of money that I've parted with and that's I suppose what annoys people the most. They buy something, it's not that great and then they're just like well just wasted all that money really didn't I? So this is the first time I'm doing this and I'm going to go through this quite quickly. Now, a couple of the things that I wanted to talk to you guys about, I've actually thrown them away because I didn't like them. I didn't want to keep them. And especially because this is a, like a regrets video for the entire year. Why would I keep something from January up until now? And presumably when I'm posting this, it will be January. Why would I keep it for 12 months if it's crap, right? So I threw it away. Let me read the things that I got rid of. The Maybelline Super Stay 24 Hour Setting Spray. If you guys remember, I reviewed it in January 2016 and it left white dots all over the face when you sprayed it. And I binned it a couple of months ago. Not even a couple of months ago, a couple of weeks ago. I kind of did like a big throw out of a whole bunch of makeup, makeup that had gone off, smelt funny. Things that I'd kept just for the sake of keeping, even though I didn't like it. So I binned that. The Bourjois City Radiance Foundation. The foundation itself was okay, but the shade was just poor. I mean, bourgeois, you guys have like five colours and they're all geared towards super, super fair people. What's the point? So I got rid of that, threw that in the bin. What else did I get rid of? My sleek power pump lip pencils. I actually got them quite recently and they were sent to me by sleek. I just couldn't get my ha head around the whole putting it on the lips and then it just literally just burning, stinging my lips for the entire time of me wearing it. Now it is a plumping lip pencil and yes, it did plump my lips a little bit, but the stinging, the constant like sizzling feeling on my lips, I just, I was just like, Bin, you know, I just can't deal with it. I just can't deal with it. It's not worth the hassle. You know what? Just get lip fillers. If you want it that badly, at least that way you don't get the sizzling pain constantly or overline your lips. All right, so I'm going to quickly run through all the things that I have regretted. Some things are definite, like, hates. And other things are, I liked them when I first bought them. And now I'm just not so much of a fan because I've realised I've not really used them that much because I don't like them that much. Some of them I would have done reviews on and I would have gone given kind of so-so kind of reviews on them. I don't want to come across as contradictory in that, oh, she said that they were so great. Things change, tastes change and that's just life really. Now, I love Colourpop Cosmetics. Their eyeshadows, their lipsticks are amazing. Their blushes are okay as well, but I just don't like the whole cream to powder thing, so I don't tend to buy them as much as I used to to begin with. Now, they came out this year with contouring and highlighting sticks. The contouring sticks are okay. The highlighting sticks, not so good. And the reason that they're not so good is because the shade range is not so great. So I think I got two, I, I got two of them. One is called Castle and one is called Illuminati. They barely show up on my skin. I've got medium skin tone and when I blend it in, I mean firstly this one here which is called Castle is actually broken and it was sent to me broken. Here it is. So that's already a minus in my books. And it's so peach coloured because the range of shades is not that good either. It's so peach coloured that even though it's showing up here, if you imagine once it's blended out, it's just blended out. That's it. It doesn't actually leave any kind of colour, any kind of illumination to the face. And the same with this one, which is called Illuminati, which is a little bit more yellowy, as you can see here. But again, it's quite chalky when you blend it in. Again, it's just it doesn't blend into the foundation. So I'm not a fan of these two. Now let's keep with Colourpop while I'm on the subject. Uh, they also released their versions of metallic liquid lipsticks this year. Their metallic liquid lipsticks are dreadful. They are the worst I have ever tried and the quality of them is just poor. Um, the brushes themselves are really short and fat. Let me just show you, I just pulled out this one. What's it called? This one is called Man Eater. Let me just show you what the actual quality of the product is like. Can you see that it's all kind of goopy and half stuck on the brush? That's how it applies to the lips as well. It's got a really strange moussey texture but then it literally applies to the lips in clumps and then when you start to blend out those clumps, number one you make a mess because they're clumps that you're trying to smooth out. It's not liquidy, it's quite thick and it's not opaque and then you have to layer it 
And the thing with Colourpop's liquid lipsticks, when you layer them, they get more and more uncomfortable, they look horrible on the lips, they crack, they settle within the lines and they start to flake off. Colourpop Ultra Metallic lipsticks in general are all pretty much like that. I am actually wearing one today, this one is called Wild Nothing. It's absolutely gorgeous, feels fine on the lips, got no problem with it, but if I layered it more than once, it would have that really uncomfortable, horrible feeling. Now, when they first launched their Ultra Matte liquid lipsticks i did a review and i'll link it below and you can see that what my thoughts are on those normal ones i've never done a review on these uh, purely because i actually hated them all so much i feel like i should have maybe done that and um i didn't so i've got a few of them i've got this one which is called man eater i've got queen zebra and three-way and those were the first ones that ever came out uh later on this one came out called flitter and i thought let me give them a chance let me see whether they've decided to reformulate it based on people's feedback had they no this one was awful as well in pictures if you look on my instagram page oh my god your lips look lovely there yeah yeah that's instagram it's just a picture a picture is not reality it's not looking at it up close you're seeing it from the distance that i want you to see it at people edit pictures as well and I've always been quite honest when people have asked me on Snapchat and on Instagram, what are your thoughts of the metallic lips? I'm like, they're rubbish. Don't waste your money. Go and buy Anastasia Beverly Hills Sad Girl, um, Sugar Plum, uh, Coloured Rains, uh, Fame, Mary. Their metallic liquid lipsticks are really, really, really good. And I'm really happy with those. So all of these are horrible. The funny thing is that Surprise Metallic Liquid Lipstick by um, Colourpop from their Hello Kitty collection is perfect. It's like, why couldn't, why are these all so horrible and why is that one so good? Can someone explain to me? I buy a lot of Colourpop lipsticks, as you guys know. And this one is a recent one of mine. It's called Love Bug. The shade itself is a gorgeous reddish orange, but the quality of it is absolutely horrible. You apply it to the lips, it starts to dry while you're still applying it. Hello, like... You haven't even got a chance to move it around, smush your lips together, anything like that. And then after a while, it actually settles within the lines of your lips. And that's horrible because it's like red lines on your lips. It's just a really horrible lipstick. Right, in the UK this year, Maybelline launched their Vivid Matte Liquid Lipsticks. These are not matte. That's like misrepresentation. Isn't that illegal to sell something which is a lie? Like, I'm a marketer. If I sold something claiming it was one thing, it was something else, my company would be fined heavily. So I don't know why Maybelline are allowed to get away with these sort of things. It very clearly says matte liquid. But when you apply it to the lips, it's like a thick gloss, um, and it starts to bleed after a while as well. So even though it's not matte, the quality itself is not that great as well. So these, after this video, will be in the bin. Now let's start on Too Faced. This is their Melted Chocolate Liquefied Long Wear Lipstick. I've got one or two of their other ones when they first came out. Some of the darker shades, they're perfectly fine. This is basically a gloss. In my opinion, it's just a gloss. It's got one of those dodgy doe foot applicators that I find very strange. I tested the colour on my hands and I was like, oh, that's pretty. But in my mind, it's called a lipstick, so it should be like a lipstick. Look at the colour itself, it's gorgeous smells like a hot chocolate it smells like toffee hot chocolate this shade itself is chocolate honey hello look at what a pretty color it is but that's not a lipstick that is a definite gloss i have only worn this once because i don't like it i put it on my lips and i was like oh lovely took a nice instagram photo looks beautiful i had to reapply it like half an hour later and then another half an hour later it literally just comes off and leaves nothing on the lips so you, while you still smell nice and look pretty on my vanity, you can stay there, but then you're going to be binned eventually too. Another Too Faced is one of their Melted Matte Liquefied Matte Long Wear Lipsticks. It's their liquid lipsticks. Now, I remember showing this in, as a regret. This shade is called Queen Bee. It's like a mauvey sort of pink. Really nice shade. Swatch it on your hand and you think, oh yeah, it'll be nice. Oh my God, it's dreadful on the face. Again, look how pretty it looks here. And yes, it is a matte liquid lipstick. I and don't get me wrong, some of their uh, their liquid lipsticks are absolutely amazing. In my 2016 favourites, I would have shown, um, what's it called, Bend and Snap. That's like one of my favourite lipsticks of the entire year. And this one has ended up being one of the worst. It makes, it dries down to a very corpse-like colour on my skin tone, definitely. Settles within the lines of the lips, cracks, looks dreadful. You soon, my friend, will also be joining your other friend 
in the lipstick graveyard. Anastasia Beverly Hills Rio Liquid Lipstick. Now, unfortunately, these kind of shades, these bright, bright pink shades are very difficult to make into a really decent colour. On the face, I mean. In the tube, it looks gorgeous. When you apply it to the lips, literally after about... 10 minutes, it starts to settle within the lines. It starts to make your mouth go really like, ugh, and it's just, it looks horrible. And uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills isn't the only brand that has this issue. I mean, I can see little bits and pieces of it on my hand as well. It's really weird. It's very bitty, if that makes sense. It's not clean, smooth liquid. I don't know, I'll try and zoom it in as much as possible so that you can see the bits and pieces I'm talking about. Can you see them? Why are there bits and pieces in it? It's got something to do with the pigment that they use to create this colour. Because I found the same thing happens with normal, normal lipsticks, which are this shade as well. So I have only ever worn this once on its own. I've also got Rio Lip Gloss, which I think came out a while ago now. And I wear that on top of this. And that is the only way that I can make it look good. Now, you guys know how much I love Jeffree Star's Velour Liquid Lipsticks. But unfortunately, this is a re regret for the year. And this is the shade Mannequin. It is a nude. And I did go against my whole no point of buying nude liquid lipsticks because they settle within the lines of the lips they just look dreadful they accentuate any dryness and that's exactly what this one did i think the only brand that's been able to do it well is huda beauty honestly because i have her shade bombshell and i was like Shall I get it? Shall I not get it? Shall I get it? There's so many people on Snapchat, follow me by the way, Charlena K, um, told me that it was good, so I did, and thank you for the recommendation, it was excellent, she's the only one who's been able to do it right. Jeffree Star, unfortunately, hasn't done it very well. <gasps> Just dripped it onto my leg! Why is it dripping? Oh, that's not good, is it? I just literally held it like that and some weird clear liquid just dripped out of it. That's not right. It's not even the colour that's come out. Lucky I've got black trousers on. Ew. Looks nice on the hands. Not so much on the lips. So the last two lipsticks I'm going to show you are also from Jeffree Star. These are from his Lip Ammunition. Um, they're basically his normal lipsticks. And I have got two which I like, which are Celebrity Skin and Unicorn Blood, which are the lipstick versions of his liquid lipsticks. But he also released a bunch of pink ones as well. Now, this first one, which is called Starfish, is a coral pink. Again, I've said that so many times about coral pinks. People, somebody needs to find out the right way to create a good formula for a coral pink. This one does the same sort of thing as what I said about um, Rio Liquid Lipstick. It shows up really nice and pretty on the hand and then when you apply it to the lips it's all bits and pieces and drags and just looks dreadful literally a couple of minutes after applying. So this one is Starfish which I really don't like. And the same is with this one called Jeffrey's Girl. It's a bright pink. It's got a bit weird because I accidentally closed it with the lipstick still up. It's really thick and again, bits and pieces, it just does not apply nicely to the lips at all. I'm not a fan. I like the colours, just don't like the formula. This is the Kat Von D Lock It Powder Foundation. This is something that I actually got only a few weeks ago. The shade that I got mine in is medium 62. It's not the right shade, it's actually too dark for me. Because I bought the foundation, the Lock It Foundation, and then I was trying to get a face powder to wear on top. Now... If you guys have followed me for a while, watch my makeup tutorials, you know that I set my face and my foundation with the MAC Studio Fix Powder Plus Foundation, which is a powder foundation, but I use such a small amount just to set my foundation, and it gives a tiny hint of colour, but not much. So I wanted something similar, but I didn't want to use MAC, I wanted to use something new. So I tried this one. Firstly, of course, like I said, the shade is wrong for me, it's completely orange. <sighs> But regardless of the shade, because I could always change it, the quality of this is horrible. I mean, I'm actually shocked because I think that Kat Von D is 10 out of 10, an amazing, amazing makeup brand. Until I came across this, her eyeshadows, her lipsticks, eyeliner, foundation, concealer, they're all excellent. This, on the other hand, makes your skin look greasy. And, and I'm like, what the hell? It's a powder, firstly. How is it making your skin look greasy? Because I applied this all over the face just to see how it would look as a foundation. And after a couple of minutes, I looked oily. It was patchy in places. It's just a really, really bad foundation. Flamingo Park collection, which launched earlier on in the year. 
and this is one of their times nine eyeshadow palettes called flamingo park same as the collection the shades some of them are okay but a lot of them you've got to wear a white base underneath them for the color to really show up a few of them are quite chalky as well so it means you've really got to pack it on quite a lot it's too much effort and it's so much effort and you put all that effort in and then you just don't really get much return on that investment if that makes sense so I'm not really happy with this now we're going to move on to urban decay and the moon dust palette so i think when i did a review on this i said it was okay i don't reach for it that much to be honest and a lot of the reason for me is the amount of fallout that i get from this it really annoys me i don't hate this palette but i don't love it i would say it's a regret because i don't really I feel that I wasted money buying it really. I would have preferred maybe to have bought the individual little moon dust eyeshadow palettes, which I've heard so much, uh, sorry, the singles that I've heard so much about positive reviews. But this one is okay, but it's not something that I generally tend to go for quite a lot. Urban Decay again. And if you guys remember earlier on in the year, Gwen Stefani did a collaboration with Urban Decay. She released an eyeshadow palette, which I do like. Some lipsticks, which are okay as well and a blush palette now i do remember when i did a review on this and i said you know what this is mostly geared towards fair skin tones and i still stand by that the two shades in here which i have used the most are these two which you can actually see are the most pigmented the other ones barely show up on me two of them are meant to be highlighters they're just not that good now the next one may be a surprise or it may not be a surprise it's the anastasia beverly hills ultimate glow kit now all the other glow kits they were all in my uh, 2016 favorites video and the only one that didn't make it was this one now this one is so so i mean it's really messy because it gets all over the place out of all of these i only really tend to use two shades the other ones they're just on me on my skin tone i don't know how it is for other people because i mean medium skin tone covers such a wide variety of shades they just don't show up on me that much i use these more on the eyelid more than anything else but i say it's a regret because of the price point and the expectation that i guess that i had of it in that the other glow kits were so great and so easily wearable for so many people but i just don't find that this one is for me next is Stila's starlight star bright highlighting palette it's just not good the shades themselves they don't really show up that much look at that that's so faint that is so 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 faint you can barely see it like what just not that good don't like it for so many different reasons i did a review on this stating that not that long ago because it is from their holiday collection which is quite recent which i'll link below but this big fat waste of money especially for 30 odd quid as well not that good now the last one i'm going to show you is going to be a little bit of a surprise not because of the product but because of the brand makeup geek oh, is there something from makeup geek which isn't that good unfortunately yes and the thing is it was limited edition most people wouldn't have got it so it might not be relevant to so many of you now what they did was a couple of months ago they released shadow versions ignore all of these because it's just a palette of mixture of loads of them they released down this side here pressed versions of some of their pigments the eyeshadows the colors are stunning they're duochrome pigments as well the colors are stunning but every single one of them creases on the lid the formula is just not good it's so buttery that it's too buttery if that makes sense it's actually just too much so some of them like this one for example here which is called sugar rush it's like a duochrome purpley shade i'll show it to you on my hand look at what a stunning shade that is it's gorgeous but it is so 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 soft and so buttery that it's almost got like an oil texture to it and because it's so buttery when you put it on the lid it starts to crease after about half an hour and the same is for all of them which is just unfortunate really and i think that's another reason why they were limited edition not just limited edition they were limited edition limited quantities i think they just wanted to test the market and see how it was and i don't think it went down too well so what i tend to do now is i use these on the tear duct because there's no creases there it won't settle into anything around there so soz makeup geek but just had to let that one out there so i hope you guys enjoyed my regrets i was about to say favorites because i'm so used to saying it my regrets for 2016 thank you so much for joining me for my video i hope you guys are great hopefully there won't be so many duds in 2017 but you never know you know it happens and i hope you guys enjoyed the video like comment subscribe and i'll see you all soon